Welcome to the R2RB podcast series, where we interview local musicians and get to know them on a more personal basis. I'm Deb Lamata, your host for R2RB podcast series. This podcast is about the local musician's journey, their influences, their creative process, and so much more. We'll also highlight their music and let you know where they will be playing their next gig. So sit back, relax, and enjoy R2RB podcast series. Welcome to R2RB podcast series. With me tonight, I have Mark Johnston of Mark Johnston Music. Welcome, Mark, and thank you for joining me tonight. How are you? I'm doing great, and I'm really thankful to be here. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. And before (laughs) we start, I like to ask two questions to get us warmed up. And my first question is, where would you be if you could visit any place in the world? That is an interesting question. Um, Until about... uh, 10 years ago, I had never been outside of the U.S. at all. And um, here I went and married a young lady from Malaysia. And uh, so my first step outside of the U.S. really um, was to fly to Malaysia in Kuala Lumpur. And uh, uh, we we got to interact there. And then we went to Australia from there that first time. And, and so I had some really cool, really cool experiences there. And then um, just this last October, we went to um, to Wales and to France and to London, and that was amazing. So I've just recently experienced things outside of the U.S., and I think if I was to go anywhere right now, it might be Venice, just because that seems like a very unique place and travel destination where you can hop on a gondola and cruise around in a canal to right? go from one place to the next. <laughs> I think that would be pretty cool. So Absolutely. I think that would be it. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I like it. I like that one a lot. All right. Yeah. So what's your favorite app on your phone? Oh, and wait yeah. a minute. Wait, wait. Oh. And why? <laughs> and why? Ooh, that's a good one. All right. So I've got, I would say if I had to pick one app, it would probably be YouTube. And the reason why I say that is because you can access pretty much anything on YouTube. You can listen to music. You can learn how to do something. I'm one of those types of people that loves to do things myself and not pay somebody else to do it. And really, that is about as helpful and useful of an app as I can experience, you know, that I've experienced in my life. Um, From a music perspective, I like the Spotify for Artist app where I can track where people are listening to my music and from around the world. But um, I think if I had to pick a single app, it would probably be YouTube. That's cool. And it's funny you should mention about you to learn something and use YouTube. My oldest daughter taught herself with YouTube YouTube videos how to crochet. And she has it, the things that she makes. It's like, are you sure this isn't coming off a machine? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. exactly. YouTube. I've rebuilt an I've rebuilt an engine on a vehicle using YouTube as a primary resource. So yeah, it's, oh, wow. it's super helpful. Oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, so yeah. you ready for the big question? The big I question am. is: How did you get started with music? Well, I've been playing music since I was in fourth grade. Um, so I think if you consider a band instrument, which I do, uh, I played trombone since I was a little kid and I've been on that journey all through high school and marched in high school, marching band and concert band, all that through college, continued to play trombone through. And some of my best memories are marching band in college. Some of my friends that I still consider my people are ones that I went and marched with all through college. Um, I learned to do non-band type music when I was like 30 years old. I actually got involved um, learning to play the guitar and the bass and the drums at a, you know, uh, just for my own enjoyment, as well as to use it in music therapy, which we haven't gotten to yet. But that's something that I've uh, have done since then. So in the last 20 years, I've been on a a little bit of an exploration trying to figure out, you know, who it is and what I am and how music works for me. Um, but wow. that's, that, that's pretty much it. It's been a lifelong thing since I was a young kid. So. Well, first that's awesome that you, you stayed with the bands right through college. And so, I mean, that's such a big undertaking in itself. That's like 24 seven right there from what I understand when you're part of a band. And even though I can't even imagine when you take it into the college level, the the dedication that you must have had to do that and for that long. 
Yeah. I, in fact, I was a I was marching in the college marching band even when I wasn't a music major. So it was one credit hour, one and a half hours every day of the week, plus weekends for the games and everything. It was insane, but wow. it was the life changing. I absolutely had the greatest time, and I would recommend anybody who's playing a band instrument if you're going off to college, do the college marching band. You will have 300 friends from the day one. And uh, it's really, really good for your social life and also uh, just as as well as uh, perseverance, dedicating yourself to something that's hard, but it's very fulfilling. So it's uh, it's a wonderful thing to be a part of. So what, what was your major in college? My major when I first started was I don't know. <laughs> I was an undeclared major, had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. And um, when I went to be a junior, they said, Mark, you're going to have to pick a major or you have to check out because you can't just continue to take general ed classes anymore. <laughs> so. so was it at that point, because I know that you and your wife are music therapists, was That's that your correct. pivotal moment of deciding to go that, into that field? That is exactly it. And what happened was, is I had to go to the guidance area or whatever. I can't remember what they call it now, but... And they made me take an aptitude test. And then they sat with you and interviewed you at that point and said, what are your interests? What do you like? And I said, I love music, um, but I don't really want to sit in a band room and have kids honk terrible notes at me. I, and then I said, I also like psychology, but I also don't want to sit in a room and people tell me their problems all day long. You know, so those are the two things I'm passionate about. But, you know, how do you, yeah, how do you put it together? And the person said, have you ever heard of music therapy? And I said, I don't know what that is. No, I have never heard of that. And then they sat me down, gave me a little bit of a, gave me the counselor's name. And so I went actually to the, went over to the music therapy guy and I, the, he allowed me to sit in on some practicums, like where you had somebody in the field doing it in the community, the college students doing it. And I just fell in love right away. Absolutely. It was like, this is fantastic. And I want to know more about this. And so from that day forward, I did music therapy all through the rest of my college. And then for the next several years after I graduated from college too, and just loved it. Yeah. Do you and your wife have your own, um, are you together? We, we are, Yep. Together. Yep. So my wife actually was, that's where I met her. She was actually at school there doing music therapy as well at the same time. So we met each other. We, we didn't date or, you know, weren't even terribly close um, at that point, but we knew of each other. And then she went back home after she, I graduated first. And then she went back home after she graduated. We, you know, she did her own private practice. She's been doing private practice music therapy since she was 22 years old wow. or 24. I maybe 24 or five, but since she was very young and I did it full time for about six years after I graduated and then started, get, I got involved in um, church music and was helping with the worship ministry and stuff there wow. and did that until 2006 when I moved to North Carolina to, to help my family business. Uh, we had, we own a, a boarding kennel for, for dogs and cats while their, while their families are out of town. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, you've got, both of you have a lot of things going on, but I think that's awesome yeah. that you and your wife have your practice together. Do you do adults and children or? That's a good question. The, her practice is primarily children. The students that I see within her practice are a little bit older. So I tend to do teenagers. And then my oldest student is a 26 year old and he's uh, he's playing harmonica and he's been doing some, he's done some live streams with me. And we even did a gig out at a, um, an event, a fundraiser. So, you know, that's been a lot of fun to interact with young young people from as as young as three up until 26 is the range that we currently see wow and music music is universal and mm -hmm. i i think i from what i've read music like uses all parts of your brain that is so cool it's, it's fascinating um when i was doing music therapy full-time after college i worked with um teenagers that had been removed from their families from the court order so their behavior disordered and then some juvenile sex offenders that I worked with in a residential program. What's so unique about music also is that people of all backgrounds, all ages, all everybody identifies with music at some level. What music does give you intrinsically is motivation. I want to learn to do this. I want to learn to do that. I enjoy that. And so it's it's less threatening than sitting and talking to a counselor. I could bring to you lyrics of a song about alcoholism, and we could talk through that in third person, and we could actually talk about some things 
that you would never sit and talk about with a counselor one-on-one, but if you do it in third person and we can break down things that you don't even have to, I don't even have to point it at you and say, look, this is what you grew up with, you know, but by going through it in third person, they know exactly where, where that's headed. Yeah. We can learn the song. We could do all this stuff to learn to play it as well. And the next thing you know, you can have in-depth conversations with somebody that they would have never been open to having with you if you just sat and tried to talk to them. Really cool things that can happen. And that's, you know, that's not the population we typically work with, with showbiz business, but that's what the population was that I worked with. Wow. Um, we, we did group classes as well as individual classes in that setting. So so we will have to take that part of this interview and we will have to do <laughs> another, we will take that to another another interview because the, I find yeah. all that very fascinating also. Yeah. And I like to learn yeah. about that. You know, mental health is such a such an issue these days. So we will take mm-hmm. that to, we will, we will Sounds revisit good. that. Absolutely. <laughs> so music Sounds has good. definitely been in your life 24 seven along, along with your, with your family. Yes, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So my children, none of them actually are very interested in playing music at all. They listen to it and they appreciate it. We've tried (laughs) and tried, but none of them wanted to take up an instrument. And frankly, you know, what are you going to do? You just you let them not choose not to do that. And the way the school system here works um, in North Carolina is that they're allowed to have two electives. And if you do music, like whether it's band or choir, then you lose out on half the electives that you could take. And the kids want to take electives. They want to take robotics. They want to take these cool things that weren't available to when I was a kid. So it's like, wow, well, how do you tell them, no, you can't do a, you know half of the electives that you could do so you could be in band? You know, yeah, it's that, that's a, a tough, tough absolutely a tough call. So what yeah. was the turning point for you then to take? And I know you still you were still a music therapist, but what was that turning point or, you know, that you you decided you wanted to take your personal music public that's a great question and i don't the the answer to that is kind of funny i've played trombone in bands and been a part of things like that but i've not ever really sang in bands so i actually transitioned out of a band and my friend mark who's an american garage band with me he's like hey why don't the two of us get together and let's do some open mics or something you know and was was trying to push me to do something because he knew i played guitar and he knew that i sang a little bit but i hadn't played the guitar in like 10 years at that point i mean it really was really rusty and i was like yeah sure let's do that what ended up happening is that my wife one of her clients parent was Justin, who is is the third member of the American Garage Band that I play with. And so we actually got together all at one time. And that just kind of came together. It was crazy. And we just started to play. And so we were doing that the fall of 2019. And so we practiced together like 15, 20 times. And we actually had landed our very first gig for the three of us to play in a uh it's like it was like a a, pl- a shop that sells wine they were going to have like an, a place oh, cool. where you could go in there and 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 just have like a little small small ensemble the weekend that that was booked was the weekend that everything got shut down for covid here oh, we were going to have our first gig that we had worked half you know four or five months on and it got shut down on that was the day that it got shut down so it just all fell apart on us And then what ended up happening is we obviously, like everybody else on the planet, didn't see each other for a year and a half. (laughs) And yeah. And then at the end of that, when we started to be like, hey, you guys want to try to get together again? We started to talk. And then we put we came together as a group. We practiced the first time. And I swear it's like we hadn't missed a beat. We were just as good that next time we got together and I hadn't played guitar in a year and a half, you know, and so and those guys. But what had ended up happening was Justin was playing on his, he had started doing live streams as an individual on there. So the next thing you know, he's like, why don't we do a live stream on TikTok? And I was like, oh, we're like, what's TikTok? Mark and I had never even downloaded TikTok ever. I mean, we knew what it was, but we hadn't downloaded it. And so the next thing you know, that kind of caught fire and we fell in love with that. There was, you know, we're playing in front of 300 people on a phone. So that's kind of fun and exciting, you know. And and so then I downloaded that. And honestly, it was my desire to start doing a live stream on TikTok that made me start to play music by myself because I had only ever played in the trio. I'd never done anything by myself at all on the guitar or singing. And so that's what launched me being by myself. So that was kind of a long way of saying that, that that was 
really, I've never really taken myself terribly serious as a musician. It's always just been about music therapy for me. This kind of launched, that acoustic trio launched me into trying to do something by myself, which has been also very rewarding and surprisingly successful and in, at some level, you know, just never really gave myself much credit for that to be an opportunity. Was Was it a little scary going on by yourself? It's still scary going on by myself. I think that it was much scarier in the beginning. Literally, Deborah, I, I, I probably knew three songs when we were, and I was like, oh my gosh, we have to get to a thousand followers on TikTok in order to go live. So at about 500, right. follow, 500 followers, I'm like, I need to start learning some music <laughs> because <laughs> I, I can't do these trio songs by myself, you know, and I'm just like, I'm a, not a good guitar player and I've got to, you know, figure some stuff out. And so for those last 500, that last month and a half, it took me to get to a thousand followers. I was working so hard. I'm like, what am I going to do? The same, the same 15 songs every week, you know? So um, I've done Facebook a couple times. I've done Instagram once maybe, but it's mostly, and even when I do do that, it's mostly my TikTok people that go over those other platforms to watch it. So, Yeah. And you've got some Awesome followers, that is for sure. We'll talk about them in a little bit. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> so before yeah. we go any further, how do people get in touch with you? Where do they find you? How do they find you? Yeah, so the um, a few different ways. Uh, I have a website. It's called markjohnstonmusic.com. Um, also on Facebook, I have a Mark Johnston Music page. Those are probably the two easiest ways. If you go to my website, you can you can see everything, the contact information. But also on the Facebook Messenger, you can see the link tree where you can see all the different links to things that, you know, that you would maybe want to reach out to. You can find out informa- information about what kind of guitar I play, what kind of streaming equipment, just kind of whatever you would want to know about stuff is that is there. Yes. And you, and please go to Mark's website and purchase merchandise. I have my very <laughs> own that I purchased, Cup of Joe mug. I love that's, my mug. So, yes. Please go. That's so them. awesome. Doing the merch thing was almost kind of a joke, but at the same time, it was like this is kind of cute and fun, you know, yeah, to do right? that. So, Absolutely. yeah, you need the merchandise. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you do write some of your own songs. How did that <laughs> process start? Where did it start? And what it's what has it been like? That is a great question. I've um, from music therapy days. I've always loved creating. And I would be creative with trying to make a different arrangements or take a song and then and make it used with different instruments or just kind of try to mix and match things to make things fun and interesting. I've And I've always been decent at writing instrumental stuff where you just like to grab a guitar and drums and bass and make up something that's like a nice groove that's kind of fun. But I've literally had never really tried to put lyrics to anything. I've never really ever done that. And so I was like, well, I don't really have... I'm like, I have this itch to write because I've been doing all all covers on TikTok. And I'm like, I just would love to do something of my own. And so it was literally in March of this year, 2023, where I sat down with pen and paper and tried to write lyrics to a song. I had just sat with my guitar. I had worked out a little chord progression that I liked and thought sounded neat. And I was like, okay, blank sheet of paper. What do I want to say? You know, what's going on? What am I feeling? And I basically did that. I sat there. Um, I'd been gone through some a little rough patch of some stuff that was going on. And I sat down and I wrote down things um, that I thought were significant on the negative side, the positive side, and then tried to match those two together. Wow. And so that song, that's that first song that I wrote, it's called Better Together. Um, and that's the one that I'm just finished re- recording this last week. And so I'm excited to release that maybe like the first of October or something. But that the first song I ever wrote was that. And so that was extremely fulfilling. I mean, there is something it's one thing to write like a musical groove and something that you can jam to and it's fun. And that feels good, too. But when you start to put lyrics to something, it takes a whole other level of ownership, you know, and all of a sudden it's like I'm now expressing my heart, what's in my mind, what's in All this stuff is coming out. I was just like, oh my gosh, this has so much more weight. It's so much more me. It's so much more fulfilling. And they they, they to share that with people. And when I do that and people give me feedback like, wow, this is, man, you know, in fact, one of the guys on my Discord server said in the chat this last Wednesday night during the live that if this song 
had been written, if I'd heard this two years ago, I think some circumstances in his personal life would be different than they are now. Wow. And I don't want to go, go into that, obviously, for his, his sake. But, you know, that how it's just, it's crazy to you hear stuff like that, Absolutely. you know, so. And then there's this song, Cup of Joe, that I got <laughs> yeah. to uh, do the, uh, I got to air it prior to the release. Thank you. Oh, I was so excited. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. you. Your followers that night were awesome. They were great. I had, was having a bit of an issue uh, the week before that, and uh, Deborah was was kind enough to email me, text me. Yeah. <laughs> Aliens have taken over. So you, yeah, you have yeah. some great, great followers, and and Cup of Joe. They so are. I love the song. Uh, thank you for letting me air it before uh, your of release. Yeah. Is there a story behind it? That is a great question. The story is completely fictional. I just absolutely made it up. I I came up with a little chord progression again that I loved, and I was like, oh, this is catchy and this is kind of fun it's happy and i sat down i had come up with the first line just humming something and then i kind of made up a word the the words to it and i'm like okay so i've got the first line where do we go from here you know and i just sat down there line by line by line by line by line just kind of i really didn't even know where the song was going until like the i got to the end of the third verse i'm like what's what am I trying to say? What's going to happen, you know, in this situation? And so then I, I made the the story that the the young man was going to pass away, and and now we got to deal with this person's reaction to that. You know, they had just drawn a connection to somebody that seemed deep and sincere, and and now I got to be like, okay, how am I going to tie this up, and how do we do the after part of it and everything? And so it was just me making something up, and like I said, I never thought I was a good at writing lyrics and i just thought let me just do try to do a lyric driven song wow. that and it just kind of came together and as i look back at the lyrics i'm super proud of them to be honest with you i'm like how did that even come out of my mind there's some nice color like coloring of the of lyric of the oh words and stuff well, yeah, and... absolutely because when i was listening to the song because i listened to the song once and i get went back to listen to it again it's like there's that story that you pull people into and all the way to the end. That was kudos. Yeah. Congratulations. That so this is the first awesome. time I've ever tried to do something like that. It was crazy. So I, I thought to myself, I have no excuse. I've got to start to write. You know, yeah. this. I think maybe there's something here that I can I, do. I think so. And so what I did is I went to, I've got a discord server not everybody knows what that is but it's a, it's a platform where people can interact as a group and so i have a group of great great people on that discord server that are mostly my tiktok followers that are close to me and we interact on a daily basis doing stuff and there it's it's a blast um what i started to do with them is i give them a top like give them a chance if they win we play trivia and once if they win on fridays they can give me a topic and I've got to write a song at, I call it not a full blown song, but a song at wow. about whatever topic they come up with. That's if they cool. choose me to do that, doing that so that I can challenge myself sure. to not just kind of do covers all the time, right. but also to write and to become more, to be more skilled at, at coming up with new, new material. So. Oh my gosh. I love that. That's a great, that's a great way to do it. Was I have another question for you? It's kind of taking you away from that. Who's your most significant influencer influencer in the music realm? That's a tough question. <laughs> I would say number one, that college marching band professor, the director of bands at Western Illinois University. His name was Dale Hopper, and he's got probably two thousand kids that would say the exact same thing. He was so passionate about music, and he was so passionate about relationships and just he he was life-changing for a whole whole like decades worth of kids that were in that college marching man program so dale hopper was amazing and then i would say secondly bruce pruder who was the music therapy uh professor for music therapy there he was he just was the kindest hearted man and his heart went out he spent countless hours shuttling college students back and forth to their practicums where they actually were trying to take their classwork and put it into action in the community there. He was reaching out. He was getting us places in nursing homes, special needs, children's uh, schooling, and all different types of different, you know, he just did it all. And he did all. So the two of them, as far as like a shaping me as a musician, you know, passionate music person, from the perspective of music is like enjoying, I love every 
most styles of music. I grew up on Frank Sinatra and Harry Connick Jr., but I love Broadway musicals. I like Dave Miller Band, John Mayer, you know, The Cure, Iron Maiden. I like hard rock, new Kiss, Kiss, James Morrison, more recently, The Script, Andy Grammer, Jason Mraz, Lincoln Brewster, Queen, Chris Tomlin. I mean, I just like anything. I can I could listen to anything. I'm the same way. I always say that if the music's good, I'll listen to it. Doesn't matter what genre it is. So where do you record? Where do you do your recording? Do you do it at home or do you go outside? It is 100% done right here in this room at my house uh, in my little music room here. So I've got very humble equipment and I just do the best that I can with what I've got. What did you play in college? Trombone? Yeah, trombone. You play the guitar. I see the drums in the back. What yeah. other instruments do you play? I, I can play the bass guitar. I can hack around a little bit on some piano stuff. This next song that I'm releasing here this next month, Better Together, has some software instruments in it as well. So you, I can get in there and, and use drum programs or use uh, piano programs and stuff like that to help contribute to the arrangement as well. So I've just started to dabble with that a little bit as also. Do you like doing that part of it? I do. I do actually. Because especially with the drums one, like I could I'm an okay drummer, but like I can make things sound like really cool with with the software program that I couldn't play in myself. So it does elevate your game a little bit if you can cool. uh, and there are and nowadays the software instruments have, have grown so much they're all actual drums that have been recorded and played and then basically you can put them where you want but it's not like a fake drum set that that sounds like junk like it was 20 years ago do you have a favorite um music instrument that you play is it the is it the guitar is it the trombone do you still play the trombone i play the trombone occasionally um but not too often I'll, i'll admit that um i think i like the guitar the most um i feel like it when i pick up the guitar and I play and I sing, I can, there's stuff that opens up in me that doesn't open up with any other instrument. Yeah. I can sing to it. It's an, it's a great, just accompaniment instrument that can let your heart pour out. It's pretty easily. So what's the best part of your music? Is it the music itself that you create writing um, the music therapy or a little bit of it all? I think, I think it's, I think it's all, I think I love, I think I said kind of early on, the creation part of it. So whether it's creating a song from scratch or taking a song that I've, that's some, that I wanted to learn to sing or somebody's requested that I sing, making it my own, taking it my own version of it, and, and then being able to sing something that means something to me, whether it's from a therapy standpoint or just for my own expression in a TikTok live, you know, show that, but that whole process of, coming up with something that's unique and uh, something that I'm expressing of myself. That, that's probably my favorite part. What's next for Mark Johnston music? Um, that's a great question. And I don't know a hundred percent. At this point, I am still in exploration. Uh, I've been enjoying the TikTok lives um, and I don't know for sure what to expect. I've had relatively good success releasing music onto Spotify, whether it be my covers or my originals. Um, but I think ultimately I'd like to see that grow, but I would like to start playing music out live in the local community more than I have at this point. Um, At this point, that's relatively new. And um, I've done it with the the trio that I play in, but I've not done it as an individual yet. And so I'm kind of wanting to get out there before I get too nervous by not getting out there. So I've gotten to be a little bit more comfortable with the TikTok lives. I don't get quite as uh, nervous about that as I used to, but I I do I do want to get out and try to try my hand at it in public with uh with actual live people. You don't seem nervous. I've 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 watched you on TikTok and you just seem very at home, very relaxed. I I like I like how you do it. Um liked how you do, you know, guess the song, guess the band. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that we and that's in the last probably two months, I've gotten to the point where I feel much, much more ease at ease. Um, the first year was in the first three months in particular were rough because like I said, I didn't know much music and I was trying to balance like not overplaying and stuff that people are getting sick of it. But at the same time, I don't know a bunch of stuff to play, you know, so um, I've, it's it's been a, a growth in process. Um, That's so, great. That's great. Yeah. Now, American Garage Band, you do lives on what night with them? 
those are Thursday nights at 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. And my lives are on Wednesday nights at 9.30 Eastern time. Yeah. And they're, are they both on TikTok? They're both on TikTok. Yeah. And actually, American Garage Band also streams on Facebook. So th- okay. those it's available on Facebook as well. And that's American Garage Band. I think that's what it's called. If you search American Garage Band on Facebook, you'd find us there. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it comes up that way. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, is there anything else? Oh, no, let me back this up. Can you tell us who did the artwork on your latest single cup of Joe? Cause I love that cover also. My very sweet daughter, Kyra did that. Um, she sat with me. She actually drew it up on a piece of paper. And then we sat there with Canva and, and found the artwork that matched what her drawing was. And she did a beautiful job doing that. It was really sweet. Absolutely. So it's not, not only is it on the cover, it is also on the mug. Is there a t-shirt? That's with right. it? Is there a t-shirt? There's, there's not. That's okay. that's a great idea though. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I was going to say, because I was just so interested in the coffee mug because that's yeah. my thing. <laughs> it grabbed your attention and everything else just like, slid away. It. Right? <laughs> I was so yeah. excited when I was so excited when the uh, when it was delivered. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. It was so oh. kind of you to get that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was that was a good that was good. So, is there anything else you want to tell everybody about Mark Johnston and Mark Johnston's music that I didn't ask or cover? And also, again, let them know where they can find you. All right, I would say. Um, I'm just a guy in process and I'm doing the best I can to make good music and music that you can enjoy. Um, I number one would want to say that I appreciate my wife, Shoba, who's been so generous to allow me to explore this avenue of something that I didn't know was even a possibility. And um, I also then would want to appreciate, tell the, my, my friends, the TikTok followers that are so passionate, like you said, that I appreciate them up and down. They're so generous with their time and efforts. And um, anytime I'm doing something, I'll all of a sudden have 30 people that'll show up and I can pretty much tell you who those 30 people will be every time. And so it's, it's uh they're 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 the greatest and um it's 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 funny because I haven't met them and yet you feel close to them. You know um, what I mean? I do, so, I do. And they've been yeah. following you for some time. So you yeah. know, they've become your your TikTok family. Absolutely. And like yeah. I said, you have some great, great yeah. followers. Um yeah. and so I'm yeah. looking forward to uh seeing them again yeah. once <laughs> when we yeah. this absolutely yeah. mark yeah. thank you so much for taking the time i'm so glad that i bumped into you <laughs> and that too. we had this opportunity to uh, talk about music and we will be talking again um i'm looking forward to speaking to your wife for the woman entrepreneur spotlight <laughs> show us he's excited Shoba. about that oh, yeah. oh i yeah. am that, that oh my gosh yeah like i said in the beginning about the music therapy i just this is just awesome i'm always learning something so again yeah. thank you I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and your and uh, uh, real real to real broadcasting for taking a chance to interview me with this. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, Mark. You have yeah. a good night. You too. Thank you so much, Deborah. Thank you for listening to the R2RB podcast series. You can listen to the podcast on www.r2rb.com backslash podcast or on r2rb.buzzsprout.com. Are you a local musician that would like to be a guest on the R2RB podcast series? You can email us at info at r2rb.com. Have a suggestion for the next podcast interview? Send that to info at r2rb.com. Find us on Facebook at R2RB Broadcasting and on Instagram at R2RB. Until next time, keep the music playing.